like my video. <laughs> so I was watching The Honest Truth, right? That's Jonathan with The Honest Truth. That's the name of his YouTube channel. And I became very interested in an exchange between two men. Their usernames are Era Black TV and Stampitis. Era Black TV made a statement praising Black women to the general effect of, I'm seeing Black women come up in the world, they've got great careers, they're entrepreneurs, they're living very well. Stem Pitas followed up his praise with, if they're doing so well, how come it has not changed their outcomes, especially when it comes to dating? If Black women are doing so much better than Black men, then why aren't they getting married? How come they haven't changed much of anything? For me, this is an incredibly teachable moment and the lack of empathy, compassion, as well as utter unawareness some Black men have regarding how they show up in the world. So when I say the lack of empathy, I mean regarding Black men towards Black women. When I say the lack of compassion, I'm talking about Black men towards Black women and this unawareness of basically how they show up in the world, right? Especially regarding their own communal issues. So... Stampitis is a man who is neither a Pookie nor a Ray Ray. By any stretch of the imagination, he has a successful black woman in his life who is the unwed mother of his child. She is a working mother currently pursuing a master's degree, as in she is a matriculating student at a university. Let's run that back. She is a gainfully employed bachelor's degree holder, currently obtaining a master's degree. The unwed mother of Stampitis' child, who out-earns her man and is far more educated than he. Stampitis of all people has the nerve to ask if black women are doing so well, how come their dating and marriage options have not changed? Now, if you were looking at statistics instead of human beings and their lived experiences, you would call this woman, Stampitis woman, a baby mama with some pookies baby. But no, these are both decent black people who represent a hushed multitude of African-Americans. Let's be honest. How many African-American people do we know who have so-called been married 10, 15, 20 years, but there is no marriage license. So on record, it's a single mother with, you know, illegitimate children. Ladies, why do you think this woman, why do you think this woman is with Stampitis but unmarried? Do you think she's the one dragging her feet to the altar or him? Let's be real here. Who in our culture is more averse to marriage in general, men or women? I'll give you a hint. P-I-M-P, hoes, plenty, coming straight from the Wendy, chopping up 10s and 20s. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, do you want to ride with me? Do you want to smoke my weed? No, 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 no. I'm a po -P -I -M -P. What else? What else? What else? I don't know what you heard about me. But if you can't get a dollar out of me, no Cadillac, no third to do Because I'm a mother, P-I-M-P, -P, right? Who's dragging their feet to the altar? In our culture, who is more averse to monogamy? <laughs> Stampitis is the living answer to his own question, but like so many other black men, he is so unaware of himself and his own actions, he still asks this ironic question. He is with a woman more than worthy of his last name. He has turned this decent, focused, intelligent woman into a baby mama when she ought to be a wife. Perhaps she is a woman aiming to keep her family intact and would therefore rather remain with the father of her child than to risk having multiple baby daddies in an attempt to find a man who will, in the words of Beyonce, put a ring on it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the swoop. These men will trap you with a baby in hopes of tugging at your heartstrings with a child to keep you out of the dating world yet in their lives, not as a wife, but only as a placeholder until something they prefer shows up. 
The unofficial wedding. This is the unofficial wedding. Worse than the unofficial hotep spiritual wife union without a marriage license while the man calls you his wife to deter you from ever seeking a marriage license by the state is the baby mama exchange where a man knows he can keep an open door to you for life because of a child. These men are almost utterly unaware of themselves and how they feature when it comes to the single mother issues of the black community. Then they say things like Stan Pitas said, well, my girl is different because I'm still with her. As if every baby mama doesn't have a three male orbit around her consisting of one, the baby daddy, two, her new man, and three, some hobo sexual she keeps dodging that is trying to get on so he can lay up in her house all day and eat up the kids' snacks in both peace and in comfort. All the oodles and noodles, all the juicy juice, right? All that good Wi-Fi? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. And no, sir, you still turned her, Stempitis, you still turned her into a baby mama, a single mother statistic, yet you are bold enough to ask why black women's outcomes are not changing. Looks like your black woman, like so many other black women, chose love and loyalty to a black man who won't marry her, despite her incredible eligibility. Once Stampitis admitted that his baby mama doesn't want to work, he said that to us randomly. Nobody asked him. He said she doesn't want to work. He then said, you know, well, I leave that up to her. How? When she just said she doesn't want to work. If it was up to her, she wouldn't be working. But you leave that up to her? Look, obviously she's pulling weight that should be his traditionally. I'm not saying it should be his currently, but traditionally, right? These women are always complaining about traditional women and where have they gone, right? Traditionally, that should be his weight. But because she loves her family, as in her baby and her baby daddy, she pulls weight, more weight than what she will be able to bear long term. I don't care what anybody says. Here we have in this woman an ironic example of a hushed population of black women who would love to be stay-at-home mothers, yet pursue education and careers in the event that the man they love is unable to provide them what they need to accommodate such a lifestyle. See, rich people and poor people do marriage different. They do marriage different. And sometimes even if black people are middle class, we still have poor people marriage goals where in like we want to be in love we want to i will cross the ocean for you i will go and bring you the moon we want that we're not marrying for for legacy and stability and no 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 no. we we want to be in love and so sometimes when love happens struggle happens enter struggle love it, it's a term for a reason did Stan Pitas ever stop to think that many women are wearing the shoes of his baby mama or does he think that they're unicorns? They aren't. To ask Era Black TV why black women's dating and marriage options have not changed is silly when he could have just asked himself. Why haven't you married this intelligent black degree to baby mama of yours, Stan Pitas? Now, I don't actually care for an answer. But it's it's a rhetorical question. So, I mean, obviously, just, just know that you, like many men, are working with the same set of reasons as to why you have not honored the mother of your child with this institution of marriage, despite years and years worth of a successful relationship. Again, I say Stan Pitas is no pookie. This is no Ray Ray. He gives off zero ghetto vibes, yet and still. What he and Future the Rapper have in common is that they are baby daddies to at least one woman worthy of marriage. Many black women, especially at the university level, are approached by non-black men. However, we all have a preference as well as a guilt, a compounded preference with guilt that keeps us with black men. This is why author Ralph Richard Banks wrote the book called Is Marriage for White People? Telling black women, hey, you fought the good fight, now lay your burden down. You've earned the right to be a wife, even if it's with a non-black man. 
These women are beaten down with words like bed wench, sell out, and other pejoratives if they dare put themselves first. But at the same time, these are women in their 30s who were clearly skipped over in their 20s. Thus, hitting the you know proverbial wall, but still being trapped under social disapproval and threats of communal excommunication. Should they entertain a non-black man? Now, my thing is this. If we hit the wall at 25, then every last one of us should be able to marry outside of the race at 25. If we don't make it into holy matrimony by 25, then nobody should be complaining because whoop, the wall you don't want is worthless, right? Deuces. Because I'll tell you what the wall doesn't do to black women that you think it does. Honey, we're not aging like everybody else. We're, We're really not. Especially some of these black women who live well and eat well. Don't get me started. Let's keep it real. I personally wanted to get married the day after my graduation at 22 years old. I ended up annulling a marital contract at 23 because I chose wrong. Yes, you heard that right. I chose wrong. Young and dumb, I didn't care about money. I cared about piety, right? I was some, you know, super duper conservative uh, Muslim I wanted a praying, fasting man who would honor my no sex before marriage standard and all those kind of things. You know, pray five times a day, wear a thobe and a kufi and have a miswak and recite Quran. And and look, I sabotaged myself because I was too naive to know that there could be no romance without finance. I was out of that abusive union in less than a year faster than you can say annulment. Now. What I know about black women is that none of us grow up saying we will marry at 35. We all seek rings between 20 and 30. All of us. No, I'm not making any exceptions. You heard me. All of us. Most of us as children do not even know how to conceptualize 30 years old and beyond. This is why Gen Z, for example, thinks 30 is so old. We have no concept of 30 as kids. We're all trying to make it down the altar before 30. I said all, no exception. Maybe by the time we get 25, we realize, oh, maybe that's not uh, feasible. But when we're growing up in our heart of hearts, we want to be down that aisle, wiped up between 20 and 30. Women control access to sex the way men control access to marriage. And some of these women are giving up the sex, hoping they can secure marriage. And let me just say, I can relate to that logic because I got left by a number of NFL and NBA hopefuls because they knew I wasn't putting out. Get to know whoever you want to know from my undergraduate years. Honey, I I double dog, triple dare you. You will not find one person who will be like, oh yeah, she was she was sleeping with so-and-so and so-and-so. Nope. Kept my head up, eyes open, legs closed. And what I thought would make me, you know, so virtuous, like, oh, look at me. I'm not sexually active. It became, oh, really? You're weird. What's wrong with you that you haven't, you know, y'all anyway, y'all anyway. What I found out firsthand is that waiting to have sex doesn't make marriage any better. I personally did not sleep with the man I entered into a marriage contract with prior to the marriage. And it did not save me from violence, neglect, and other forms of dust. Because it boils down to to character. Not the legalism of a theistic religion. Not the outward manifestations of faith. Like it boils down to character. You can put up all your little standards and all your holier than thou, this and that. And yeah, you can attract a total narcissist, a total wolf in sheep's clothing. Look, loose or chaste, many black women, good or bad, are coming out with the same results because we are giving chances to a pool of men with similar qualities. They say, stay down with him, help him, you'll see, be the ride or die, only for you to ride and then die without honor or legacy. When you fail with that man, they will say, well, you should have chosen better. That's exactly what they told me. Well, if you were any good, you would have got married in your early 20s. Okay, I did. Well, what happened? Oh, well, you should have chose better. Okay, fine. Fine, fine. Bet. Now, when you level up and decide to choose better, they say you don't deserve better. (laughs) Damned if you do or don't. 
So you may as well do what benefits you most, right? You're a black woman. You just, just do. And anything you choose is going to be wrong. Now, frequent panelist to Jonathan's channel, which is The Honest Truth, Loren, chimed in with a nice response to Stampitis, saying that black women have taken more control of their own lives in terms of being able to live where they want and eat what they wish due to this newfound success of becoming the most educated population in America since 2016. Now, I know that that sounds, you know, arbitrary, but living outside of bullet ridden ghettos and being able to eat more than poor quality foods has changed so much about how black women look, behave and interact with the society at large. I love how these men call our being the most educated population in America a myth, as if they would know better than Michelle Obama herself, who was the first to shower this news on the nation during her husband's administration. Imagine that, high school dropouts and felons who know better than a woman like an Ivy League woman like Michelle Obama with two master's degrees, not one but two, literally valuing their manhood over this elite woman's education. It's what we deal with as black women. We can arrive home in our cap and gowns just to be told we're doing everything wrong by a sea of men who have scarcely earned their GEDs, fresh out of a state prison. And then he asks why our marriage results have not changed if we're doing so much better. Black women have emerged from living under the poverty line. We have come out of the welfare queen trope. My sister, who is divorced and currently a single mother, is a six-figure woman who never once qualified for welfare, food stamps, an EBT card, WIC, Section 8, subsidized housing, none of it. Instead of feeding her children brain-numbing, cost-effective foods, it's fresh produce. It's an array of freshwater seafood. It's fresh-sliced deli meats for sandwiches on sprouted grains that help them with their physical and psychological development. Now you juxtapose that with all the high fructose corn syrup and aspartame some of us were fed who were born in the the 70s and 80s, who ended up siphoned into special ed when really there was nothing wrong with us. Not that I've ever experienced special ed, but you know, a lot of black people have. And it's like, nothing was ever wrong with us. We just had a bad diet, putting parasites in our brain, you pork eater, right? Let's keep it a buck. These are the things within the grasp of the new black woman that they have been unable, that they have been able, excuse me, to change. But of course, these are the things black men do not see because it's only affecting women and children. My sister went to an HBCU and was raised to be with black men, taught to be with black men, taught to give black men a chance, taught not to look down on a black man with a felony because, hey, they're black and they're oppressed and and they're targeted, right? Now that mentality set her back until she learned to be more elitist in her selection. Now, today, with a man of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, That's a black black, uh, Greek letter organization that you cannot gain access to unless you have matriculated into a college with a chapter. Because she chose to be a little bit more snooty and uppity, she found a balance and success with an actual co-equal where she wasn't being charitable with her heart. She said, no, he has to be thus and so. Imagine that, a woman who got more choosy after having kids. Ooh, let's talk about that. Now, he is by far the best man she has ever brought into our family, but it was her willingness to be uppity, choosing from the upper echelon of the black boule that made the difference in our lives. Do you not know that the more educated a woman is, the less likely she is to find marriage on all accounts of all races and ethnicities? How would you not know this? How come white and Asian people know this, but African-Americans don't? The more educated and successful a woman is, the less likely she is to get married because the pickings of qualified men uh, to lead her, they, be, they become slimmer and slimmer. And no masculinity doesn't make you qualified to marry a woman like this. You have to be able to lead her. You have to be able to outsmart her. You have to be able to 
be the boss. Think of every team that you've been on. Who's the captain? It has to be the most well-seasoned, well-knowledgeable, the person who's able to make decisions. Who's the coach? Like, don't get me started here. I do not know why black men are so disconnected to black women in compassion and understanding, but I do know that many think like racist doctors and hospitals who believe black women can assume more of a painful load and feeling less pain than a non-black woman. So many of our men fail to acknowledge that their feelings about us are rooted in racism. They think we are as simultaneously non-human yet superhuman as certain non-blacks do. They will expect black women to perform like super women, wonder women, and then treat them like they're not as good as any other human of another race. Superhuman and non-human at the same time. It, it's crazy making. So many men, excuse me, so many black men hate black women but conceal that hatred due to their need for our labor, just as so many non-black employers who also hate blacks, but conceal it due to the confines of professionalism because they need that yield, they need that labor. Instead of both the black men and these employers, um, excuse me, both black men and these employers find any reason to fire you, AKA break up with you, like, look, these employers find any reason to fire you, like how black men find any reason to say a black woman is not good enough to be with. Black men may fancy a non-black woman, even if she looks like a porous, porpoise, a fully aquatic mammal with enough layers of blubber to keep them both warm in the winter. But if a black woman isn't a dime or a nine, she's unworthy. This is why so many black women are divesting. These men conceal their hatred but it always rears its ugly head in the way they treat us. It's our right to be fed up and disgusted. And it's also our right to finally put ourselves first. Now, to wrap all of this up, I would like to finish with a super chat left by YouTube username Self Love Hills, right? She responded to uh, what Stan Pitas asked uh, Era Black TV. She said, to answer Stamp's question, it is because the black community coddles failing black men. If the black woman is doing well but supporting Pookie, the community will fail. Black women have to hold failing black men accountable, but so do black men. Successful black men have to hold failing black men accountable and not just stroke their egos and say it's the woman, the woman, the woman. Where did self-love hills lie? The black community doesn't coddle failing black men. Well, then you tell me why people are more excited for a man who gets out of jail than one who gets a master's degree. Okay. Okay, then. So thanks to Sam Pitas, we now know that the black woman is not merely supporting Pookie. She is supporting black men who are above and beyond Pookie, distinguished from Pookie, doing far better than Pookie. Some of these men are so focused on young black girls and taking advantage of young black women that they don't realize that grown black women are over the gangster and the drug dealer. Ew. But who we're not over is the trainer at the gym and the security guard with, with the honest job. Adult black women have not yet turned their backs on, you know, the van driving black men with the paper route nor the, the, the shoe salesman at the, the locker room or whatever that store is called. That means financial inequality still prevails. So in closing, because I'm done with that, I would like to remind you that my name is Chocolate Angel, not Angel. Please do not call me Angel. There are many people in this world, male and female, named Angel or some derivative. Angel, Angelica, Angelina, and Halita, like. But as my channel name would suggest, 
I am the only chocolate angel, as in the only person born in the 1980s with such a name on their birth certificate. It's not a nickname. I was born this way. You can call me chocolate. That's my first name. You can call me chocolate angel. That's my whole name. But not angel. There's too many of those. There's way too many of those. Thank you. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think down below if you agree or disagree. So long as you are kind and respectful, I will hear you out and respond.